Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is chapter 15, and we will go through the measures of spatial order correlation. Uh, learning objectives are understanding about what is spatial autocorrelation, what are the tools for measuring spatial autocorrelation, and uh, in particular, we will have a, um, a quick look at this uh, RGO uh, DA package, which is um, uh, very interesting. Okay. So first thing is a bit of a uh, touch of a bit about the theory. Uh, so in the chapter I mentioned a few things, but uh, you know the the first the the first important thing to mention is the Tobler's first law of geography, which says everything is related to everything else. But near things are more related. Than different things, and this is um, somehow um, well um, connected. And so, recalling the John Snow um, belief that the cause of cholera was a waterborne um, uh, cause, uh, and so uh, just to mention a bit that he found out that the, the, the water pump um, was the cause of um, the spread of cholera within um, the central London to um, uh, uh, states um, um, that were um, uh, close to each other and at the very center of this uh, uh, spread of uh, cholera was this water pump. And so he realized when he went uh, out, house by house, uh, asking a condition of uh, and everything, and then uh, concluded that this water pump that was at the very center of the spread of the cholera was the cause. And so the, that cholera was a water bomb disease. So in summary, spatial autocorrelation is uh, basically identified as the degree to which the values of a variable in one location are located with the values of the same variable in neighboring location. Uh, there is more interesting explanations on Wikipedia, for example, but uh, and they mention about um, few tests like three tests in particular, which are used to identify uh, autocorre autocorrelation, spatial autocorrelation, uh, spatial autocorrelation. In particular, the first one is the Moran te uh, eye test. So this test helps us understanding if um, this similarity, so nearby locations are more similar to each other than to distant locations. If this similarity is statistically significant or just due to chance. So this test will provide a p-value and the p-value is low or typically less than uh, 0.5. Uh, 0.05. Uh, in this case, there is significant spatial autocorrelation in the data or a non-random pattern. Okay, so um, this is uh, fairly important. So the, 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 the formula, mathematical formula is um, a sort of uh, um, um, uh, can I say um, Uh, adjustment of um, standard deviations. And so you uh, have uh, some weights, uh, and which uh, this WIY, which are the spatial weights. Uh, 
and the, the sum of this weight times um, the uh, two variables z i and z j, uh, which are the distances between the points and the mean value. Uh, so they are multiplied together, summarized, and then time by the number of, of locations. Uh, this is then divided by the sum of the weights times the um, Z, uh, a, a, a particular neighboring uh, location, which is this, uh, um, we can uh, identify it as, I, as um, ZI uh, squared, which is one of the two, um, and it is, uh, again, the, the distance from, from the mean. So we will go through uh this thing to understand a bit more what's happening uh we have very supporting uh, ending functions which are uh, provided and we use uh this sp depth package the, the uh, so that there is this uh, this is some uh something just to uh look at the summaries uh, easily so we go through a case study about the Polish election data in 2015. So we already seen this data and they are from the SP data large package. What we are interested in are the types of locations for, for the, the election and the first or not. So we select these two uh, variables within this data. As you can see, it's a multi-polygon simple feature collection. Um, as any other simple feature we have provided, we are provided with a bounding box, uh, some uh, coordinate reference systems. And so as you can see, we have the types, it can be urban, ruler, and we will see them um, clearly later. Uh, we have the turnout and the geometry, okay, of this multipolygon. Uh, the first map, I uh, just uh, did it differently, so the, the other used a T-map, and then we would use T-map as well. But for now, I've uh, just made it a ggplot map with geometry, uh, simple feature. And so as you can see, this is the, the map. And we have this type ruler, urban, urban ruler, and Warsaw borough. Well, this one is the one which is the the, um, the part which is highlighted. Okay, and we will see what's happened when we are we are now going through looking at the neighborhood locations of our observed data to understand if our data are somehow our observation or you know, uh, observation are somehow uh, connected so autocorrelated or, or just randomly there okay so the order suggests and it, it, it's usually a good practice to uh, um, to uh, uh, spatial make valid, okay? So um, use this st make valid function to uh, make sure that um, so your polygons are all valid. And this is a good practice, even if they are you 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 pass it to this function. In fact, I've run the map again to to see if there's any differences. Can you catch any differences? <laughs> okay, so 
let's have a look at this uh, component of the Moran um, test. So what you are going to do is basically you are going to construct the neighbor's list from a polygon list, and this based on regions with contiguous boundary. So the function that we use is this uh, poly2 neighbor. So with, we take our data, uh, apply the function. Uh, we use this queen through, which means the largest polygon, so the polygon. Uh, what does is producing a neighbor list object. If you do class, uh, this object is an NB neighbor. Uh, it lists the number of regions, the number of non zero links, the percentage of non zero weights, uh, and the average number of links, which is 5.7. Okay, links. Uh, you can have a look at this, uh, this object and go inside and extrapolate things and everything. What else we need is now we need the weights. So now we have the, the, the uh, neighbor list object. Then we use this nb to list w, okay, which is the spatial weight for neighbors list function which add a weights list with values given by the coding scheme style chosen. In this case, we chose the B. B means the basic binary coding, okay? Then uh, we will use another one. Uh, but for now, we just use the, just the base. What this produce is the characteristics of weight list object. Uh, it, it's again a neighbor list, list number of the regions, not zero links, but then there is a percentage of non-zero weights, 0 0.22, and again, the same thing, the same number of links, average number of links. Then we have a specification for the weight style B and the weights constant summary. Okay, so N and N at OS0 and S1 and S2. If you recall the formulation for the Moran I, so we have this S sub zero, which is the sum uh, of the weights. So we have all, all, all the elements, the components for uh, running this test, which is actually an hypothesis testing uh, type of test. So for testing for uh, autocorrelation, we first build a random normal. Okay, what we do now is basically uh, have a look at how this uh, Moran's test works. Okay, and uh, in order to do this, we uh, produce, so we set up uh, synthetic data, uh, just random values based on the number of uh, observation uh, of our data set. And so number of rows and random normal. So this is a, uh, all, uh, a bunch of uh, numbers, zero to one, and then we run a Moran test. Okay, and we run, uh, then we apply this Moran test to test for spatial autocorrelation within these values and check for the randomness of these data. Obviously, these data are random, okay, because we just made it random. Uh, so in this case, if the p-value is low, it suggests there is significant spatial autocorrelation in the data, indicating no random factor. So we apply to this uh, random normal bunch of uh, data. Moran test using the weights that we had just made, uh, these this weights here, these objects, the weights, 
and uh, we ask for randomization poles and then say that the alternative hypothesis is a two-sided. So result of this Moran uh, I test under normality uh, says the p-value is uh, higher in 0 0.05, okay? So we can see that, uh, so those are random values. Have you got any questions, any addition, comments, anything? No, it's okay. Just please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So now we see what's happening if we use our data and add a gentle trend. Okay. So this is our data. Uh, we extrapolate just the geometry from the data, and then we, uh, con um, again, extrapolate the centroids of the largest, po largest polygon. And so we have now the chord object, which is made, yeah, of X and Y. We can even have a look at this, uh, uh, jump into R, Let's see what is actually uh, this is. Uh -huh. Okay, so I have a little bit of them and everybody testing. Okay, so this. Is what I uh, meant uh, to show you. Let's have a look at it, how long it, this is should be quite quite fast. Okay, so the, the map and everything. Um, okay, so it's a bit. There we go. So this is our X. Okay, it's a bunch of uh, numbers uh, and then we run um, more on test uh, and this is quite high and now we want uh, we add a gentle trend to this data okay so the chords are now uh, geometry type points because they are centroids uh, and so we have a geometry. Okay, these are the first um, five geometry. Yeah. So what's happened next is that we set a beta. And this is a, a, just a, um, something that we are going to use to uh, enhance our um, synthetic data. So our 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 trend that we are um, building up, uh, and so uh, then we use these cores, these centroids, to uh, transform the geometry into lat and long. So because we had a simple feature, okay. So if I if I run a spin coordinates, uh, I have now two columns x and y which are coordinates okay so in um uh, yeah and then i select just one of the two so the first one uh, and this is uh, basically a way that says that it, it's a malignation basically i select the the longitude and then divide the value by a thousand and multiply all of this by beta and my x. I think I've made the same thing using um, not the function, but a different um, procedure. Okay, so this is our new object. So x plus beta times t. So beta times t plus we 
we add this to our random normal, and then we run again the Moran test with the weight decided, random point, etc. So we can see. that this value it is now lower than 0 0.05, okay? So uh, because we use our, um, our, uh, our data, okay? So it's a little closer to something real. Let's go back to uh, the presentation. Okay. Yeah. So now what we do is to test for the residuals. Okay. And uh, we apply this uh, Moran test for residual spa spatial correlation to a linear model specification. So, for example, uh, our object. Okay. Great. Our object. Um, there it is, um, uh, explained by uh, T, uh, and we run this function lm uh, dot moran test, uh, again, alternative two-sided with the weights, and the result is again uh, up, uh, back up again, okay, not by seven. Yeah, any comments? This. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Any comments? Any additions? Any why? <laughs> no, nothing else. Cause yeah, you just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So. Now we have two um, uh, standard way to um, uh, have a look at this um, uh, auto, uh, spatial autocorrelation. We can use global measures or local measures. The global measures are looking at the average level of, of spatial autocorrelation across all observations. So this is a bit articulated, okay? Even a bit more than, than what we've seen before with the weights. So now we use this uh, joint count dot test function, which is similar to the Moran I in SPDEP. Uh, and this is basically named in the documentation BB joint count statistic for K colored factors. This is its name within the documentation. What does is counting test for spatial autocorrelation using a spatial weight matrix in weights list form for testing whether same color joints occur more frequently than would be expected if the zones were labeled in a spatially random way. Okay. So basically test if the joints, they have same color, are more frequent than what expected if they were random. Okay. So to have a look at the function, what is the function, what are the arguments and everything, we use the args uh, within uh, the function within brackets. And so we see what are the arguments of this function, as well as as we compare this function with the Moran test function, and we see that 
they have uh they they have some common arguments and so we start applying to see what's happened with this uh, joint count of tests so in this case we use again our data and drop the geometry and then uh, select the, just the type so we have this, uh, the types are the rural, urban, so we have seen it. Then we use this type um, vector uh, and type it to the joint count multi, which is, uh, this, is this was the joint count test. So we, we use this uh, joint count multi, which I haven't, uh, uh put any uh specification in it so r okay so this is uh this one here and so we can have a look at this other one okay so okay let's have a look at this okay they are uh, basically, as you can see, multi and test. Okay, so we can use uh, the specification is basically uh, with multi. Okay, so let's go back to that. And so we apply this joint count of multi on a li on our list of uh, way neighbor. Uh, weights and uh, I mean I look at the head of this we see that we have joint count expected value variance the z value of the, of the uh, various uh, types okay joint count for example in the number of joints within ruler the expected values the variance and the z value Okay, so what we do now is using an inverse distance based uh, list of weights object, uh, which releases different results. So we first need to identify the neighborhood conti contiguity by distance or the neighbors of region points calculated by, so we use a, an Euclidean distance for um, uh, considering the distance and um, within uh, neighbor points, uh, and we use this function, uh, distance neighbor, uh, ne near, ne okay, distance near ne function. Uh, and so we specify from zero to 18,300. So we want to have a look at all the neighbors within this distance to, uh, to each other. So we, we, we set a limit, uh, lower bound of zero. So they are attached to each other or maximum distance 18,300 uh, kilometers, okay? So the result is an object, a uh, number of regions, uh, weights are now 0.33, and the average number of links is grown to 8.45. Okay, so we restricted our um, focus. And then consider the spatial link distance measure with this function and be this on course and um, again we do the same trick as before we divided them all by a thousand to create an object gwts that we use inside this neighbor to list function this as i said it's a bit articulated because now we are basically creating an, a new list of neighbor weights Okay, and then again we pipe this 
new list within the joint count multifunction. And so we have a new um, object. What happened now that we want to have a look at the first two know of our data in the election, because these are Polish election in 2015. So we have a look at the first two know, dropping the geometry, selecting the first two know instead of the type, uh, and then run the Moran test. On the first step of weight, P, the standard. And so we have a P value, which is very low near to zero, and so they are not random. Uh, we have a look at the residuals, as we did it before, to know uh, on itself, basically. So, um, and uh, Moran, uh, the, we, we look at the distances uh, on the Moran test, uh, and again, the same value of the P value, uh, we assign this to an object, uh, and so we can see what are the, the statistics and everything we already have here. Yeah. So basically, in early 1970s, in the interest was shown in the uh, there was a, a spread of interest within the Monte Carlo test. They are also known as a hope tie test or a permutation bootstrap. Basically, what we are going to do now is um, using a Monte Carlo test uh, to permutate our data test for Moran uh, statistics. So to see if we simulate um, our data to have a, uh, a larger object to see if, the, if anything change, changes this. So we use this permutation test for Moran's uh, I statistic, which is calculated by using this uh, NSIM number of simulation, random permutations of X, the object, uh, the random, uh, the object that we created for the given spatial weight scheme to establish the rank of the observed statistic in relation to the number of simulated values. So we use this Moran dot Monte Carlo. The first turno is now published within this function, Moran Monte Carlo. The list of weight is the base, uh, the first one we created. We asked for 999 simulations, and then uh, this other option, uh, return both. So, and so this is a way to summarize the results. And so we see that we now have permutation bootstrap um and the randomization values result okay so basically we put our estimate in the object that we did it before that was um the estimate, which is quite near, uh, actually quite near, to the bootstrap estimation. Okay, so we can trust uh, the test, result of the test. And this is uh, basically a global uh, way to uh, identify um, um, spatial autocorrelation. Uh, and uh, this is a double test with the Monte Carlo, so simulating the data. And, um, and so this 
let us understand what are, uh, in the case of uh, we use the turno, uh, the first turno for uh, the result of elections. And so the, the, the p value is very low, so we can say that they are not random. Um, but we are um, so in presence of autocorrelation and um, the uh, estimation it's um, very uh, low so yeah do you have any addition, comments, or anything that might be, this is the variance. So, why is it? So this is the variance. Yeah. Uh, and so the variance within, uh this um neighboring so the 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 uh, of the results uh within neighborhood locations uh, it's it's quite low okay hmm. and even if we do simulation so this is consistent And, uh, okay, let's have a look at the, so this is a global measure, as I said, um, basically give you an idea, a global idea of the average level of spatial autocorrelation across all of uh, observations. What's happened if we have a look at the local measures? So for the local measures, we have three type of tests. We have the local morons, which uh, uh, basically, okay, just in, in general, local measures are used to identify clusters or patterns in spatial data at local level. So the moron local looks at whether a location is part of a cluster of similar values, while the JTIS ORD which is named that just local G, identifies areas within significantly high or low values compared to other neighborhoods. While the local G, G or local C highlights locations that stand out as being different from nearby areas, whether due to clustering or dispersion. Okay, so this is looks at similar values within a cluster. This other one identify uh, high or low values within the neighbors, so the highest or the lowest values compared to the others. While the local C is basically looking at um, the differences from within nearby area. Okay, I haven't, so I, I went through uh, all of them, but uh, as is, we are short uh, in time, uh, I'd like to jump into our, uh, our geodata, geodata package, which basically provide one of the, the this local measures as a, uh, within this package. So, uh, and so we go through one of these local measures with this package. This package is our GeoDA. Uh, and um, I'm not sure if I can, uh, let, let me know if you can see this page. Can you see this page? this new page of the... Yes, we can see it. Okay, so this is GeoDA. Uh, 
Uh, and it is a, uh, so the R Geoda is the package, is the, is the R package for this uh, software, Geoda. Geoda is a free software package that uh, is used for spatial data analysis. Uh, and you can, uh, it, it, it's very interesting. So uh, it, has, it provides for many functionalities. So you can see the Moran uh, test here, for example, and uh, visualizing them uh, uh, within global uh, looking uh, of the analysis and everything. So if you, there is a GitHub, uh, version and everything if you uh, type um, like geoda uh, you find that there is a you can download it uh, geoda on github for example there it is okay and so uh, this is uh, how it looks like uh, it's just very promising very interesting to someone that hasn't before uh, and so even on Wikipedia you can find more about uh, spatial uh, autocorrelation in particular I found this um, it? it's very uh, interesting so spatial autocorrelation and so you can um, uh, have uh, some some extra information here. In particular, uh, looking at this um, uh, package, okay, so what we do is uh, using this function queen weights on our data, the Polish uh, election, and then have a summary to, to see what is the result of this, uh, this function. This queen weights, Queen weights, which is this one here. Obviously, it doesn't find it because I didn't load the data. Okay, so this is the queen weights. And so basically, it's a queen contiguity spatial weights function that create a queen contiguity weight with option of order, include lower order and precision thresholds. Okay, so we now have uh, uh, this uh, uh, function that has provided us with, um, a, uh, we, we look at the summary, but if we ever just look at the output, so it's a um, object of class weight, and uh, so the geo weight, a geo weight. And so we have some some extra information about the max neighborhood, the mean neighborhood, and um, and so we can have a look at the summary, and uh, and so we have the, even the sparsity, the mean, and so we recall this value. Okay, 5.7 that we found previously. And then, uh, so having a look at this, uh, so you need to uh, load the parallel package because this takes a bit. So it's better if we go back to the presentation. So it takes a bit to run. But then, so uh, you use this local uh, multi GRE. Uh, the GRE, okay, local multi GRE. As you recall, recall this the GRE, uh, we use this one here, the local C. So there is, uh, we use this local GRE statistics uh, with on uh, on the object that we just created, this geo weights, and then uh, we selected 
the first and the second kernel to see if there's any uh, common uh, things. Takes a bit, but then, so we check if the, the things, this is the best practice to check if the uh, things are uh, they all true. So we use the local GRE measure to compute local adaptation of the uh, local C GRE statistic. Uh, and uh, basically uses a squared differences to measure the similarity. As I said, it looks at differences, which is unlike the local Moran. Um, and so low values of the local GRE indicate positive spatial autocorrelation, while large refer to negative spatial autocorrelation. And so if we uh, then um, have a look at what's happened here, so this is something that we did it before, okay, but now we use the W style. I don't know if you recall that we use the B uh, for the standard. We now, for, for looking at the, the list of the neighborhood weights, we now choose the Y, the W uh, style. And then again, uh, we create another object, um, just as the same as before, but just we pipe. Uh, instead of selecting just the first turno, we select the first and the second turno, and then we look at the local. Okay, so we are now looking at local. And so we want to ever look at the first turno, not on everything, but just on the second turno. So we compare these two and we apply the local um, on weights. And these are, uh, it releases a pseudo p value. Uh, and so these are uh, the results. And um, so then we do the spot spot. Uh, here again, it's a bit of like, uh, uh, again, articulated, but then, uh, so we look at uh, basically as we um, do, we have a, a pseudo p value, we look at p adjusted. Okay, so we have this. Um, I, I might have um, omitted a few things okay? because this lita, okay, this is a local uh, multi jury, so the local C result. So we look at the local C clusters within our data. Uh, and then uh, we make a P adjustment. Okay, we use this uh, Bonferroni correction, correction, this, um, this so, and then, um, so we have this, this value, which is lower in no point no five. And uh, we have a look at the positive uh, matches. And then with a the map, uh, there is a comparison of the local uh, multivariate GRE with SP depth and the local multivariate GRE with RGO depth. So as you can see, there is more little differences somehow sometimes yeah yeah that's all I've got and if you have any questions if you want to me to go back and see whatever you did you know as long as you have anything to add <laughs> 